Uh, Ian, we have a Patreon. We do. Patreon.com slash CU podcast. You go. And if you feel like uh, parting with some dollars, some greenbacks, greenbacks, some, some shells, some, some dinero, um, you can get access to the full video podcast, uh, monthly hangouts with Pat and I. Uh, you get the bonus bit podcast bonus. that we record uh, before uh, the normal episodes. Uh, today was car talk with uh, Click and Clack. <laughs> the Pet Boys, uh, Ian and Pat. Yeah, Ian and Pat. Yeah, Pet And boys. you get access to uh, these uh, poll topics as well. And I do, a, uh, you know, a more or less weekly writing. I'm going to have to do uh, one hey, uh, tomorrow or the day. After. We could do our hangout this this uh, this weekend because the week after that will be we'll be at the Long Island Richard Gaming Expo. We should probably do it this weekend. Uh, speaking of that. Anyway. Uh, yeah okay we'll figure that out <laughs> we'll figure we, that one out we got we got uh, a patreon we got a patreon um poll topic here in second place i'm kind of shocked by this result see see you don't you can't predict it people in the patreons sometimes you think you can know what's, what's up you don't know is grading or reselling worse for video game collecting 42 percent in first place 58 percent. how important is faithfulness to gaming when on CRTs, upscalers, etc. How faithful how important is the faithfulness to the to the original game experience when you're on a CRT or using an upscaler, Ian? So this this came uh the way of uh Pepe underscore Salo, uh Salat. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh great artist, worked on games like Paradise Killer and whatnot, and does a lot of artwork for uh Mr. related products and stuff like that. So clearly into this. The full question was, are you guys a fan of gaming on CRT monitors? How much do you care about input lag versus avail availability on new systems, upscalers, etc.? What's your opinion on CRT preservation? Keep up the great work, longtime listener. Um so for me, when playing older systems, I would definitely say that getting it as close to the original uh, image is, is pretty important to me. And, and, and the main reason being um, a lot of these games, all of those games made back in, 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 in you know, the, the pre flat screen TV era were made to take advantage of uh, certain tricks and things that happened on CRT TVs naturally, the way they displayed the image to make the games look better. Um, and when you remove them from a CRT TV and you put them on a flat screen or something, especially without any sort of upscaling, the games look blotchy. They display poorly. Uh, things that were designed to be hidden on a CRT TV, uh, you know, are no longer hidden. So you see, you know, some weird artifacts and things like that. Uh, certain transparency effects no longer work properly. Um, you know, certain shimmering and wave, you know, types effect type effects don't look proper. So I do think, you know, it, it's it's a personal choice. But for me, um, faithfulness to gaming is is pretty important. I, I do keep a uh, a Samsung CRT in the guest room um, that Vani and I will use a lot for uh, Sega Saturn. Um, sometimes I like to hook my PC Engine up in there. And, uh, you know, it, it's nice to have. It's great for light gun games. It's great for certain rhythm games on uh, like the PlayStation that just do not work properly on flat screen TVs because of delay in the way that the, the image is, 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 is um, you know, put out. So I, I do think it's important. That said... I don't necessarily think it's the, you know, be all end all. I don't think that everyone who's into gaming has to go for the most accurate experience. I want them to go for the experience that that does it for them. And if that's, you know, slapping a Sega Genesis onto a flat screen TV and running it in 16.9 mode. I'm going to cringe. It's going to be hard for me to look at. But if they're having fun, I, I, I don't care. Sure. I don't care. Um. I think a great way to kind of meet halfway uh, is, you know, with the the upscalers and the line doublers and things like that um, that are available, like the Retro Tink, uh, you know, two X, the five X, uh, you know, the the old tried and true Frame Meister. Um, these are good ways to get to to up not only upscale it so that it looks like it should fit on a uh, a a a, a flat screen TV, but also a lot of them have effects that can uh, help, you know, add scan lines and things like that, which will give you a, a, a closer to original, uh, you know, look to the game that you're playing. 
Um, personally, I think a lot of attempts at scan lines, artificial scan lines, don't look particularly great. That said, I, I have not used a retro tink five uh, X yet, but looking at the scan line settings and things that people have done with it, mm-hmm. I have been fooled by pictures. I've been fooled by screenshots. Like sure. it looks really, really good. Yeah. And once you get the image on the TV with low lag to to approximate the CRT, I think at that point, you know, for me, that's good enough. Yeah, well, I I, I agree. Once you, if you can get a nice scan line effect that, like you said, a, not, it won't ever be perfect like a CRT, but approximates the effect and gets you to where you were originally. Um, I think I think I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, because if, if you can get to the point with uh, an upscaler where the effect that you norm the effects that you normally l- lose from going from CRT to flat screen are replicated well to your liking, yeah. I, I think that's about as far as you can get. Yeah, um, because and- because we talked about it before when when all the artists were doing these games, they were doing it for CRTs, so they they were they were doing the art based upon having scan lines, having the dithering effect and yes. things like that. Uh, I put a tweet link here. This came out from a year and a half ago uh, from CRT pixels, comparing the Sonic three waterfall um, here where like you see it on a CRT with, with the dithering effects and scan lines and the, and the little blurry enemy hiding versus the pixel perfect version on an emulator. And the emulator looks like trash, right? Yeah. Sonic looks clear. He looks like a clear guy, and so does Tails. A clearer guy. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> but a funny way to phrase it. And and you have maybe clear overall colors. You see more. Uh, you see more of the the different effects, like on the cheek stuff. But the waterfall looks like trash, and the enemy blending in, you lose the entire effect of that. Right. And like the bricks in the ground look different. The background looks different. I've so seen. If you can, if you can get that back, I, that's where. Yes. That's where. It's, that's what we, I mean. We've we've done it. You're supposed to, you're supp- quote unquote, supposed to play it the way it was on a CRT. That was the original design of the artist. And that's where you err on it, it, to me in terms of how it looks. I hate playing uh, stuff that's like too clean, pixely. Uh, yes. You, you want to throw a lot of the emulators, uh, whether it's N64, Super Nintendo, NES, they have a whole slew of built in filters because they realize that's probably what. It should you want to get back to they even have different color palettes uh to approximate how the tvs are you go from rgb monitor is way different color palette than a, a fucking 1987 mitsubishi tv that i had in my living room you know what i mean like that's sure. entirely different so that the, the, so we're getting to that point where it doesn't matter as much uh we're going to get close enough i've seen effects uh from computer games the same thing where i, I saw one on twitter i forget where it was where it was like a skeleton, the pixel perfect version. I think Frank Cifoli might have tweeted out. It was like a, a skeleton, pixel perfect on, a, on an emulator. Oh, yeah. Versus, yeah, I, I remember this. Yeah. And it looked horrible, pixel perfect versus how it looked on an original monitor. You right, lost you all these. The dithering and you, you, you lost the, everything. The structure of the bones was like completely Different. lost. The shading. Yes. Uh, I think if if it was hit, he either retweeted them or put them out. But uh, there was another one of like uh, one of the Castlevania characters, and like on an emulator, it's blotchy, you know, with the pixel perfect. But when you look at it with the scan lines, you get shading and muscle tone, yes. and like it's just it, it's really really freaking impressive what you lose when you go for pixel perfect, which, but a lot of people seem to go for that these days. And it's not my personal uh, choice. Um, Real quick. He also asks a couple of things. How much do you care about input lag versus availability? And what's your opinion on CRT preservation to uh, talk about input lag? It's actually one of the reasons why I gave up my frame meister. Um, I don't think for all sorts of games it matters, but I was using my frame meister and maybe it was not set up ideally. Uh, I, I totally, I mean, I'm not an expert on this shit. I'm a lay person. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm aware of it, but it's not my forte. Um, but there was always a little bit of lag. And when playing shooters, it just got to the point where like it got annoying. So I got rid of it. The retro tink two X that I, the retro tink scart two X that I use for my PC engine. Now, almost no lag, nothing that, 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 uh, you know, has it affect your gameplay. It doesn't impair my gameplay. Yeah. So and then mm-hmm. with the CRTs, um, I think there's there's good reason to preserve 
old technology. Like we said, I don't think for the average person, the CRT needs to be their go-to. Um, but just like I think, you know, keeping old turntables in working order, keeping old computers in working order for, you know, history and preservation and being able to experience that exact moment. Yes. I think it's really important. I think where I find it more important than home video games is arcade cabinets. I have yet to see any arcade cabinets that put flat screens in them that look good. Um, I think all of the arcade one up machines look kind of like just weird running the old games on flat screens mm -hmm. uh, until there is a, a decently inexpensive upscaling option for arcades or effect so, option that makes it look yeah. right. Uh, then I, you know, I don't, I, I would much rather have the tubes in there on the the arcade machines that require it. And I know that is becoming an issue and people are really trying to repair and preserve the CRTs. Our friend Skylar talks about it. Um, I, th I think that's where there's more of an immediate difference if you tried to go from CRT to flat screen. I think it's very important in that regards. Yeah, I think, unless, like you say, unless I came up with a way to like do like an overlay to make it look like a CRT on or an LCD or someone does a run of LCDs designed for arcade games directly. I don't know. That's that's sounds like that would be like a huge undertaking to produce something like that. Um, to me, it comes back to, like you said, what's the original experience? The original experience should be preserved, but yeah. I'm, I'm not going to gatekeep and say that everyone needs to play it. How you played it, your Genesis in 89. Like right. th you don't if have to do that. This is your hobby and your uh, thing. Obviously, go for yeah. it, and I get it. Like it's great, but play, play, not everyone needs to do it. No, yeah, play your analog. Uh, which, by the way, the analog products all have mostly have filters on them anyway. Uh, to, to to sort of. Oh, like... that was. I don't like their their. I don't like their scan lines. Okay, but that's one but of the things them. that I think we'll get. I think what they they talk about new display modes. I think they're going. I think the pocket is going to try some new scan line modes okay. for when you have it hooked up to the TV. And I want to see because the technology for that has definitely improved. Like okay, I said, well, look at the retro five well, I mean, X. Well, the Genesis one had it in there. I bring up Genesis. Maybe they there's a firm sure. up there that can put more in there. But like you can always try to get there. That's the whole point. You can try yeah. to get. You can get there. It's just how much resources you're going to put into it. But the preservation. In terms of playing it on the real controllers, real system, and a TV that should always exist, but I'm not going to gatekeep and say you need that in your home or else you're not a real gamer. Say that for the gaming conventions or in the actual museum, like that's to me what a museum should be. Set up yes. the living room. Set up this like how the National Gaming Museum has. It has like a, a bedroom from the '80s. It has the '70s living room. Like that's fine. That's that's where I sort of err on that side. So, all right, all that's, right. that's well, all that I have. I, I looked up dithering by the way. I love that word dithering. They don't use that word. enough. <laughs> 